at Section 19 of the Finance Bill. We have proposed a 2% early tax payment bonus. Um, the first is to appreciate um, the government for pulling this out. It's actually been a while. I've done taxation for about 20 years and uh, not uh, so much has been seen about bills of this nature. So um, it's a solid point in the positive direction. Uh, my comment basically is to uh, commend the initiative from the presidency so that um, uh, the redundant level that we have in our tax law will be improved and uh, we hope that this is not just a one-off uh, project, it's something that should be continuous and then our tax provisions and law will be alive with what is happening uh, worldwide. On behalf of PwC, we also want to commend uh, the federal government, the executive, the National Assembly for this excellent initiative. We think this is good for Nigeria and our image in the international community and the signal that we send to the investment community to say Nigeria is indeed open for business. First, let me of course, like all the other speakers, commend the federal government, the Senate and of course the Ministry of Finance for putting together the finance bill. The last time I saw a finance bill, I was barely out of my teens. So it's, um, for me, it's also a watershed event in Nigeria. This finance bill, for us, we see it as a welcome development. It's something that we've all canvassed for. And so we, we, we commend the executive, we commend uh, the National Assembly. We are so, so excited. It's a new dawn. You must be aware by now that the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has passed into law the Finance Bill 2019, which accompanied the 2020 appropriation bill that was presented to the National Assembly by President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2019. If you ask me, that was fast, but we were not surprised, and why not? Firstly, is a step that was taken in line with the promise of the leadership of the National Assembly to deliver Budget 2020 before the end of the year 2019. Secondly, in line with legislative convention, the finance bill had as a matter of necessity to be presented to the public for scrutiny at a public hearing, and that was done on Tuesday, the 19th of November, 2019. What followed was a bang. Just two days after, the Senate passed the bill. What remains is for President Muhammad Buhari to put his signature to the bill. But of course, we must warn you that the Federal House of Representatives is yet to hold its own public hearing. We understand that that was billed for Monday, the 25th of November. Whatever happens, the two houses will harmonize their reports and a clean bill will be sent to the President for assent. While we await the final copy of the Act, we want to, on this episode, bring you up to speed on what transpired at the public hearing hosted by the Senate on Tuesday the 19th of November 2019. This will give you the much needed background to what this is all about. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, will be our guide. <laughs> The finance bill, like I said earlier on, proposes incremental but necessary amendments to certain provisions of existing tax laws, including the company income tax, the personal income tax, value added tax, petroleum profit tax, as well as the Stamp Duties Act. The finance bill also proposes essential palliatives to support micro, small, and medium enterprises and mitigate the impact of the VAT rate increase in the most vulnerable businesses, communities, as well as citizens within our country. Some of these measures include expansion of the list of VAT exempt items, specifically uh, relating to basic food items, educational materials, as well as medical supplies. The Honorable Minister proceeded to provide details. So in section one of the finance bill, we introduced various reforms to eliminate inequitable taxation. The taxation of companies is normally based on annual profits or taxable gains. 
This provision promotes fiscal equity by ensuring that companies are not taxed twice on the same income under different tax laws. At section 4 of the bill, we have introduced an amendment of the insurance taxation rules. Under the company's income tax, all companies except insurance companies are permitted to carry forward their losses indefinitely. The Act provides special provision for the taxation of insurance businesses which are deemed punitive and are no longer in alignment with the realities of the insurance business today. This has discouraged investments in the insurance industry over time. So the proposal that we make is to change, to, to eliminate that provision and create a level playing field for insurance companies and ensure that insurance companies are taxed in a fair and equitable manner. In section 10 and 11 of the finance bill, we have proposed amendment of commencement and cessation rules. The existing uh, commencement and cessation rules in the Companies Income Tax Act result in double taxation of income earned by companies at inception as well as at winding up. These provisions are deemed punitive to startups and a disincentive for investment. So the proposal we have made is to eliminate, eliminate this double tax burden to promote fiscal equity and to improve the business environment in the long run. In section 4 of the bill, we have proposed a simplification of the minimum tax rule that is introducing a flat, what we've done is to introduce a flat 0.5% corporate tax on turnover of companies. The finance bill is also long on incentives aimed at attracting local and foreign investments and also promoting voluntary tax compliance. In section 7 and 14, we have introduced a proposal for reduced tax rates for small and medium enterprises. The existing tax rate of 30% is considered to be punitive for many small and medium-sized businesses. Hence, the finance bill proposes the introduction of a graduated tax scale that exempts small businesses that have a turnover less than 25 million naira from tax, and also introduces a tax rate of 20% for medium-sized businesses that have turnover between 25% and 25 million and 100 million. At section 19 of the finance bill, we have proposed a 2% early tax payment bonus. On the ease of doing business. At section 31 of the bill, the bill seeks to legalize the introduction of electronic correspondence as a means of objection or appeal and general communication with tax authorities. As you can see, the Finance Bill 2019, which has just been passed into law, contains far-reaching amendments to the Company Income Tax Act, as well as various other tax legislations. But it does seem that the amendment to the Value Tax Act, particularly the increase in the rate from 5% to 7.5%, has overshadowed everything else, whereas far-reaching amendments have been approved for at least six tax legislations. The Valerie Tax Amendment is just one among many. Even at that, the federal government has gone to great lengths to ensure that the poor and the vulnerable in the society are protected from the rate increase. Section 36 of the Finance Bill increases VAT rate from 5% to 7.5%. The intention is to redirect the tax focus away from direct taxes by reducing the rate of indirect taxes towards uh, uh, by reducing the rate of direct, direct taxes towards indirect taxes such as VAT. This proposal will result in increased tax revenues for the government. The proposed increase in VAT is expected to help the federal government of Nigeria's 2020 budget but also will support the states as well as the local government. The federal government earns only 15% of the VAT revenue that is collected. The state and the local government earn 85%. The increase will, in addition to raising revenue, also help transition the existing VAT regime. The impact of an increase in VAT is cushioned by the introduction of a higher VAT compliance threshold for small businesses 
as well as the exemption of basic food items, uh, basic necessities such as food items, educational material, and medical supplies. We have taken pains to make sure that all of the goods and services that affected the lower uh, at a level in our societies are protected from paying VAT. The finance bill proposes expansion of government revenue sources to include stamp duties on electronic transactions. Section 49 of the finance bill uh, has proposed imposition of excise duties on certain imported products. The bill seeks to impose excise duties on excisable goods which are imported into Nigeria in a similar fashion to their locally manufactured counterparts. The audience listened with rapt attention. The public hearing was attended by stakeholders from the broad spectrum of business, government and civil societies. The Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN, and the big auditing firms. Also in attendance were the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Mr. Clement Agba, and the Director General Budget Office, Mr. Ben Akabweze. Senator Ovie Omagigi, Deputy Senate President, represented the Senate President at the public hearing. The Finance Bill 2019 is crucial to the growth of the Nigerian economy as it will allow the government to realize its annual revenue projections and targets. You may be aware that the bill seeks to increase government revenue with a proposal to raise the country's VAT from 5% to 7.5%. But the finance bill is not just about increasing VAT, as it is a composite bill seeking amendments in seven acts of National Assembly with, reduction, with reductions or removal of taxes in some sectors. The National Assembly is a people's parliament where all shades of opinions are ventilated and experts are able to have the space to contribute to a fashioning of situations that will endure. In his welcome address, Chairman Senate Committee on Finance, Senator Solomon Olamilekon Adeola, seized the opportunity of his speech to address issues surrounding the proposed increase in the rate of VAT. Ladies and gentlemen, it is worthy to note that the additional fund from this increment of taxes will be used to fund healthcare services, educational and infrastructural programs. In addition, 85% of all this VAT revenue will be allocated to both the states and local government. Having established the broad principles of the Finance Bill 2019, the floor was opened to the various stakeholders in attendance to make their comments, their observations and their suggestions on the Finance Bill 2019. The CITN was represented by a council member, Barista Sam Abelui. I will talk a little bit about the VAT increase. Why we won't say there shouldn't be increase? We are still looking at the threshold of uh, 25 million. The devil is in the details. We are looking at the operation of this 25 million. Because for a, that a company was 25, that, that, that a company had 26 million turnover in 2018 does not necessarily mean if we have uh, 26 million or 25 million in 2019. So that figure is not static. And we told him uh, uh, VAT is not what to delay the payment until the end of the year. So how do you uh, ascertain that the company that operated under 20 million last year, which does not fall within the threshold of paying VAT, is not going to operate beyond 25 million in the following year. Another aspect to it is the business uh, angle. Company A is under is as 100 million uh, turnover. Company B has 20 million turnover. They are selling the same product, possibly this product. Now, if company the company that is operating with 25 million or less sells this for 100 naira, the same product, the company that is operating with 25 million and above sells the product for 105 million we are creating a kind of disincentive for the big companies and I don't think it is, it is bad to be big. So we also need to look at this other angle of uh, the VAT implementation. Minimum tax. What is minimum tax? You, you have operated within a year, 
and you have not made profit. But the government says you must do something to show that you are a lawyer member of the society or a committed member of the society. But the question is whether it is 5% which we uh, are against uh, seriously or even the 0.25% uh, that my colleagues have uh, mentioned here. Whatever you pay out of turnover, you are paying out of capital. It is that you make profit or you don't make profit. So we, we recommend zero percentage, but if, if that would be too difficult for government to do possibly anything in the age of one million. You have to show sense of uh, commitment to the state of the country. Otherwise, anything you pay out of turnover, once you have not made profit, is out of your capital. Now, making the, some people also, uh, we need to make our tax certificate worth it. Because why is it that people don't pay their taxes? There's a trust deficit within the system. Now, if you stay in Lagos, you live in Lagos, and you get your tax clearance certificate in Lagos, and you take the uh, certificate to Ogun State, possibly you want to do something. The solution is that we should make our tax certificate universal, particularly at the, I'm talking at the state level now. If you, and JTB is here, they can also take uh, note of this. If you get that certificate in Lagos, and that is, you are, they certify you that you are okay. If you want to do any transaction in Port Harcourt, it shouldn't be forced on you to come and pay another one because uh, they also want you to develop that state. Whatever uh, uh, certificate you get, it should be universal across the country. We noted that this is a composite bill and indeed it cuts across many sectors of the economy. We also observed that the bill contains some positive contributions which we believe will help the economic development of the country. And of course, it also uh, gives consideration uh, to attract uh, taxpayers to pay their taxpayers on time, like the 1 to 2 percent bonus for medium sized and large companies that pay their income tax liability early under CETA. So, but however, we have identified some key areas which we are presenting for consideration. The first area is in section 2 and 26, that section 2 and section 26, that introduces 7.5 to 10 percent of withholding tax on dividends paid by petroleum companies. We believe this will be, as, as, uh, this will be exceptionally punitive, especially for onshore operations that currently pay 85% tax out of their profit. And we also actually believe that this incentive is there because of the high tax rate compared to the ordinary companies, the other companies I meant, that pay 30% via CETA. We have reviewed the finance bill and under company's income tax, using turnover only as a criteria for exempting a small firm from company income tax should be reviewed. There are companies we are, which are viable with turnover less than 25 million and could be brought to the tax net while a company may have a high turnover but less viable. Turnover should not be the only criteria for exemption. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria agrees with the provisions for insurance companies to carry tax losses indefinitely and the abolishment of special minimum tax for insurance companies as this will increase the tax net. On petroleum profit tax, Repealing section 60, we are of the view that that will impact on shareholders, especially considering the general harsh operating climate of many businesses in Nigeria and the conditions under which many oil and gas companies are operating. Therefore, the decision to subject dividend paid out of petroleum profit to withholding tax needs to be given a deeper consideration. We just have three areas of key interest for man. The Financial Bill 2019 should adopt the this, this Smedan business categorization of MSMEs in the application of this relief. By Smedan, 25 million naira is for micro businesses, less 
than or equal to 100 million is for small businesses, and then less than or equal to 500 million naira is for medium scale companies. Therefore, man recommends the following that less than or equal to 20 million micro businesses should be exempted. Then, less than or equal to 100 million should be categorized as small businesses and should be asked to pay their tax at the rate of 10%, and less than or equal to 500 million naira should be categorized as medium businesses and requested to pay 20%. There is also the need to harmonize taxes, levies, fees payable by businesses in the country to attract more investment, and that would translate to higher productivity and more tax revenue for the government in the medium and long run. The Joint Tax Board was represented by a large delegation of its members, chairpersons of various state revenue boards. Our recommendations that Part 3, Section 51 of the Finance Bill, seeking to amend Section 36.2 of the existing Capital Gains Tax Act, be reconsidered with the proposed 10 million Naira threshold reviewed downwards. That the mode and manner of remitting stamp duties collections arising from electronic transactions by the banks to the relevant tax authority be explicitly stated in the amendment. That the roles of all parties, actors and agents involved in the process of administering stamp duties arising from electronic transactions be made explicit to avoid room for ambiguities. That the exi existing section 108 of the Personal Income Tax Act on the definition of the board be left as it is as any alteration as proposed is contradictory to the letter and spirit of the act in respect to the functions, roles and responsibilities of the Joint Tax Board. That this distinguished and honorable committee rather consider inserting the word service to be defined as the Federal Inland Revenue Service or the State Internal Revenue Services as it may apply that an establishment act for the Joint Tax Board be considered by the National Assembly in the medium term, while relative powers of enforcement and sanctions are vested on the Joint Tax Board in the short term. Representatives of accounting, auditing, and tax consulting firms were also on hand to contribute to the debates. You know I was expecting a stormy session at the public hearing, but that didn't happen. Wonder why the finance bill was so well received. It was commendations galore. I think what is responsible for that is that all the stakeholders were involved from the beginning. It all began with the decision of the federal government to review the national tax policy, which was concluded late in 2016. And in February 2017, the Federal Executive Council, for the first time, passed the national tax policy. Of course, an implementation committee was set up with stakeholders from public, private sectors, and the academia. Later on, that implementation committee was expanded, and it was supported by a think tank known as the Technical Committee. We recall that on this program, we did inform our viewers that the Technical Committee was working closely with the implementation committee, and that a finance bill was in the offing. That gentleman who spoke on the program told us that for the first time in 20 years, a finance bill was in the offing and that it would be a yearly affair. And so, here we are. It is here to be seen which and which of those suggestions from the various stakeholders made it into the final bill that was passed by the Senate. Whatever happens, it's now a yearly affair. So whatever we don't get right, next year, 2020, Finance Bill 2020, will take care of the shortcomings of Finance Bill 2019. That's real change. Next level. It's a new dawn in Nigeria, and the mantra is change. The wind of change is blowing all over Nigeria and beckons to you. One sure way to respond is to perform your civic duty, pay your tax. With taxes, government generates revenue to fulfill its electoral promises, ensure regular power supply, provide good security, standard education, medical care, true total change. Individuals and corporations enjoy specific benefits, rights and privileges for paying taxes and avoid the consequences and penalties of not paying. 
Oil revenue is no longer sufficient to bring desired change, but your tax can. It pays to pay your tax. A message from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. We thank you most sincerely for watching. See you next week. Bye for now.